title. So um, you see all these titles of never get them passed again, never get your guard passed again if you do this this one little thing. You can do all of them and it, it, it won't necessarily translate. You have to do everything all at once to become proficient. And I don't care if they say just stay turned onto your side or stay down the middle. It's you, you'll, you'll never get your guard passed again. That's not true. Um, the next concept that we have to understand here is we have dual framing concept. Okay, we have two sets of frames. We have our legs as a set of frames and we have our hands as a set of frames. Now looking around the room and watching most of y'all, you're using one very effectively and then you're not using your second effectively. So for instance, this Toriando throw by, as soon as he turns and cuts this angle, okay, he's cut an angle around in my head well, what's happening is, is y'all are kind of playing right here, and I see your hands do this. And this one is, you're keeping your legs turn, or, uh, locked down here, and as he starts to move around the head, your hands drop lower. And I'm like, okay, and then you push out. And then you start to work in. Your, your frames are coming in last second at best. You have two sets of frames, dual framing, okay? You have your lower set of frames, and then you have your upper set of frames. Understand. They want to create an angle. They need to get past your knee line. So keep this in mind. They have to stay the rule. They have to stay this side, north of the knee line. Can't let them come this way. You want to keep them north of this knee line this way by my feet. All right. So the first grip they're allowed, or that they're going to take, rather, and we have the opportunity. We'll work on grip breaking and setting guard and all that later. But they're going to get this grip. All right. So once he gets this grip and he starts to cut that angle, you have two sets of frames that have to operate independently. What is this hand doing right now? Floating. Is he attacking this side? Not really. He's on this side. The most dangerous threat at the moment is on this side. I've beat this frame. If he starts to circle around in my head, I've got to frame up even more and push off. So my frames are what are going to save me. I have to constantly be framing against this guy. I use my feet as a frame, my shin, my knees, okay, my hands, my forearms, and my elbows. All this in between here are my framing. So as he moves, no matter where he goes, I have to constantly be framing. Okay? Constant frames. Now we're going to active frame, okay? So your partner is going to do the same drill, throw bys, pulls. We're gonna frame, where are your framing points? Where am I framing off of? Okay, I can frame off of his thighs, his hips with my feet, as long as I can recoil them, okay? As he comes in with his body, I can frame off his shoulder, his head, his knees, his hips, his shins. I can frame off of everything. All right, we'll cover the advancing concept here in a minute, what he needs to complete the pass. Understand that this side, the next concept we're gonna to have to understand is this hand has to move up to the head to finish the pass. We can't allow this. So in the middle of our framing, we have to be looking for the closer hand to come in, the closer, to close the deal off. Can't let him have that. On my throw by, as he comes around, boom, I frame. This hand is the one that's gonna do the most damage because he's on this side. If I, if I remove this frame and start pushing down here, he catches that head, now we're in trouble because my head can't run from it. I can't let him have head control. It's okay if he's working around down here with the feet, but the second he clears my knee line, the next thing he's looking to do is to establish head control to get inside of here. Okay, I'm framing. If I frame off of this arm and this shoulder, is he able to establish head control? Not initially. I can't just bail off of this and go here because he just reaches in and grabs that and now we're in trouble, okay? So keep in mind, now we're gonna do active framing. I want you framing off all these different points. If you have to frame your feet off of the bicep, you can frame off the bicep as well. Grips, grips, grips. Now, um, what's the dangerous point about guard passing? The thing we have to understand is guard players if they don't have a grip, they can't do anything, okay? Um, grip fighting, especially in the gi, is so underrated, which is one of the reasons why um, we have focused heavily on the grip sequences. Um, you could take a, a jiu-jitsu player that's 
not necessarily at a technical, a ultra, ultra high level, te technical level against the person he's against. Say he's competing at somebody that's quite a bit higher than him. If he focuses on his grips and really dominates the grip game, it's still gonna be very difficult for that higher level player to do a lot. Okay, so grips is a big, big thing. And you take the guys that have been, you can always tell who's been taught uh, grip sequencing and grip dominance from a white belt versus somebody who say is just taught individual techniques along the way. There's many different teaching styles, okay? Um, but when it comes to guard play and passing, that's really the battleground. That's ground zero right there is who's winning the grip game. So we talked a little bit about grips and what are the acceptable grips? There's really, frankly, as a passer, there's no acceptable grips, but what are the hardest grips to defend? Let's look at that. Hardest grips to defend is gonna be this because when we get into a laid back position, this is the first thing that becomes available to it. Okay, so what do we not want to allow him to do? We're going to be doing a little bit more discussion here than technique. Um, there's a couple things that we don't want to let him do. He wants to advance his grips, meaning he wants to work from feet, and we'll just call this a foot grip because he's down here around the shins. Even if he wants to go to like a, a neutral grip, we'll watch how he works this. Okay, so go four fingers in here. This is going to be a foot grip or what you call a pant grip. These are really, really good for your leg drags where they start trying to pull a leg across, okay, and, and pin that. Now he's working up above to the knee line. His whole goal is to advance his passing sequence from the feet to the knee to the hips to the chest. This is where he's trying to get. So in order to do that, he has to beat the feet, he's got to beat the knees, he's got to get control of the hips, and he's got to get down and get belly to belly. We can't allow the belly to belly connection. There's going to be many, many times where he gets around your legs in guard play. Many times he's going to get around your legs. The question becomes, can he get chest to chest with you and establish head control? Those are the two final elements of a successful guard pass is does he get chest to chest to establish that connection and can he get the head control? If he can't get that, then you get to reestablish your guard. So what are acceptable grips or what are the hardest grips to, to defend? This is probably one of the harder ones to defend because in doing so, I have to actually get my hands projected out past my guard. Now that's a good thing but many people can't stay like this for a long period of time. It's very difficult to, to stay in this position, especially if he gets repeated, repeated, repeated attempts at passing your guard, okay? So what we wanna do here is we want to catch the grips on the advance. If we can't break this, say we've got dual grips and I can't break these, I know there's limited things that I can do here aside from maybe putting foot in biceps or going with like a leg lasso type thing here, okay? He's gonna get a good chance. Most of the time, when they go to the foot grip, they're looking for some sort of a toriando or a leg drag, meaning the first one we just did, he's trying to toriando me, and he turns and he kind of gets it past that knee line. Boom, here's your toriando. Or he's looking for a leg drag. He's gonna try to pull one leg across, and he's gonna get in there and close that distance. Now he wants to establish that chest to chest, get head control, and he passes the knee. So what we can't allow is that grip sequence to advance to the knee. The knee line is gonna be like your first big major battle that you're gonna fight. So if he starts at the foot, we've got good control here. We feel pretty good. We're working all right. We're tight. He's not really been super, super effective. If at some point in time, he advances that grip to the knee line. Okay, switch me in, I'll show you. That's where he becomes an ultra effective passer when he can get to this knee line. What I mean is this hand or this hand cupping the knee, okay? We cannot allow this under any circumstance. This has got to be a, a big, big focus, especially here. We're a knee drag or a leg drag school. We teach the leg drag from start, okay? We're looking to establish this position here, get in close and then lock us up and pass with the leg drag. We don't want this. So we have to be really, really cognizant of when a hand comes in here and tries to capture the knee. Now I'm not talking about a knee grip as in here. I'm talking about this advancement with the backside knee catching or backside hand going to the front side of the knee okay so the next thing we're going to work right here is beating this grip partner is going to come down they're going to grab same side they're going to go here first thing we're going to do is we're going to scrape that grip off okay pushing it off he's going to go with this hand and he's going to scrape that grip off and get it on the back side of the knee okay then we're going to go same side here we're going to catch this grip is going to get scraped off we cannot allow that grip to go here because what, what follows is the second that's here is if we hit, get hit here, okay? Why is this so dangerous? It's dangerous because the force generated here is very difficult to keep your knee from expanding away from your chest. 
Boom. He even exposes it and has to put his leg down to ride himself. Okay. Very, very difficult to beat. This is probably one of the biggest threats to your guard that you're going to see. Okay. Is, is guys that get super close. Just talking about the knee line right now. So your partner is going to play here. Same side, same side. They're going to grab. We're going to scoop that hand off immediately. Okay, get it back down to the shin. Start fishing our feet back on inside. All right. Now, <clears throat> inside control. If at all possible, we want to have feet down the inside. This is acceptable. We want to dominate this area right here. What I don't want to allow to happen is, is both my legs to be placed on either side under any circumstances. This is bad. Okay. I don't want legs to be placed downward where I'm no longer dominating this area here to here. All right. So your partner is going to start, grab the knee. As soon as we grab the knee, we're going to scrape the hand off and then get the hand, get the foot back inside. I'm going to go here because notice when my hand comes across, am I still dominating the middle as a guard player? No. No, I've split his guard. This is not good, okay? I've eliminated, I've put a bar between the right and the left. This is not good. If at anything, it'd be nice for him to be able to get his foot back inside. But he can't do it with this grip here, especially if I get to like a kill position. Not good, he's gotta scrape this grip, okay? So from here, same side, same side. He's gonna scrape, feed the hand, the foot back on the inside, right himself square. Okay, now it's square back up. I go here, he's gonna scrape the grip, ride it back down the middle, square his hips back up. Square your hips back up, yep. Here, here. We have to be conscious of the knee control. Make sure we do not let him control the knee line. Close, here we go, one, two, three. 